Welcome to the Jester News Arse of Gravy. <laughs> Hello, good morning, everybody. And on today's headlines, Nancy Kelly. <laughs> right, let's talk about this woman, shall we? Got to move a chair a minute. Right, let me go. Right, so here, yeah, it's all going on. It's all going on. Nancy's tweeted Modern culture has a vested interest in pretending that only female and male exist. You homophobic trollop, right? Only female and males exist because enemies of LGBT people recognise it's important to erase intersex people in order to uphold homophobia. That's her tweet today. <laughs> Head of Stonewall. Right, that's what we got today. It's absolutely unconscionable. Right, let's see why she's done it. Try and work out why she's done it, shall we? We'll have a little think. We'll apply the analysis. Modern culture has a vested interest in pretending that only female and male exist because enemies of LGBT people recognise it's important to erase intersex people in order to uphold homophobia. Right? <laughs> if you want to read it, it's in the thing. You know the doobry. I'll put it in there. Right? So, here. Oh, right. Weaponising intersex people. Weaponising intersex people because they know the gravy trains come to an end. That's what they're doing. Okay? They're weaponising inter intersex. The number of times that intersex people have made it absolutely loud and clear that they do not wish to be included in the vapid LGBTQIA plus hand, knees and bumps of daisy people is immeasurable. And yet they refuse to listen. They can't help themselves. That's what ideology does. What you have here is a classic example of queering. Right? They've shut the trans, the, the Tavistock trans clinic down. They've, touched, they've shut it down because it was homophobically and ideologically captured. Get your head around that. See, it is. It's not difficult, right? They know now the game's up. The homophobia's there. It's red raw. And because of that, they're now going to use intersex people to keep their case going because they haven't got a case. And they're querying it now. They're querying it. So pretending male and female exist. Pretending male and female exist. Come on, Nancy. Give us the third gamete, you troll. Go on. We're waiting. We'll call it the Nancy gamete. Yep, Nancy Gamet. If that manages to get in the mix somewhere with the X and the Y, it births idiots. Yes? <clears throat> this was a response, or not a response, she was pushing an article by a, a lunatic um, who appears to be an intersex person themselves called Hyda Valoria. Like someone out of a... some strange job. Hyda Valoria! Um... And I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You can read it, it's all in the doobris, right? But I'm going to just read you a bit of it. I think the biggest reason for this is... Do you believe intersex people are stigmatised and misunderstood? Intersex people, right? Get this clear. There are about 40 discrete conditions that come under what's called a difference in sex development or a variation in sex development. Intersex is a dreadful word that implies that people who have got a DSD or a VSD are third sex. They are, they're in the third sex. Shut up. Right? And respect people who've told you time and again, do not use this. Right? Don't. So they asked this woman the question, do you believe the intersex people are stigmatised and misunderstood, was the question. I think the biggest reason for this is society is so vested in maintaining sex and gender binary. Can't help it. See, he didn't even answer the question. Straight into it. Straight into the ideology. I should specify, modern Eurocentric society. Oh, post-colonial theory. <laughs> Wankers. Right? Because many indigenous societies did acknowledge sex and gender diversity. Yeah, but not the way you think they did. Watch Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman. Learn something, right? They did this to cope with feminine men, i.e. gays, in some cases. Like me, feminine men, right? Nothing to do with your gender nonsense. With colonisation... <clears throat> with colonisation, that all changed, because, you know... Indigenous people didn't know what sex was before we got there. It's just so racist. I can't, it's beyond understanding. I don't, well, I mean, what are they, what do they even think is going on? Um, it, uh, they can't help themselves. They, they're using LGBTQIA in this ridiculous article, which you can read, right? It's racist, it's homophobic, it's the whole thing. Uh, how about this? I know lots of people use cisgender as a way of saying non-trans. Fuck off. Right? But I don't because the term creates a binary system of gender that a lot of people don't fit into. Listen to me. If you want to wear a tutu and you're a six foot four bloke with a pair of testiculars the size of a, you know, a grandfather clock's pendulum, 
I don't care. Just make sure you can't see them. Right, you can dress what, wherever you want, right? If you want to put lace around your, you know, your top half and flirt around like you're in New Isles version of Swan Lake, I don't care. Do what you want. People have been doing it for years. Doesn't make you anything. Doesn't make you anything, you know? When they strip you bare, you're exactly the same as the rest of us. Right, now... I don't, because the term creates a binary system of gender that a lot of people don't fit into. How can a cisgender person experience vehement transphobia? Well, just say you're trans. That's your rules, not mine, by the way. Just say you're trans. I'm trans today. I'll be different tomorrow, but I'm trans today. We know somebody that does that. Some lug nut up in Scotland, right? Okay. This ties back to intersex people being misunderstood even within the LGBTQIA community. There is no LGBTQIA community. There isn't any. What are you talking about? <sighs> While most people in the community are aware of the medical erasure intersex people face, nobody faces medical erasure. Right, okay. This is the UK in 2022. Go in, go, go in and listen to some people that have got something more to say that's th th than, than this ideological rubbish this woman is spouting. Lots of people still don't know what intersex means. They can't stop using the word. And explaining it to them entails discussing sex characteristics, which isn't comfortable. Cock, balls, fanny, uterus, clitoris. Hmm? Orgasms. I sh feel strangely not uncomfortable. You mean adults? Try talking to adults. Right? They might feel comfortable. Yep. People born with typical male or female bodies don't have to experience this because everyone learns what being all male or female means. Usually early on at home or in school. Usually early on. <laughs> You'd be in real trouble if you didn't. If you'd already late on, wouldn't you? Um... Read it, all right, okay? Because Nancy Kelly's retweeted it. And it, you, just, you have to go back to Kelly's, re, Kelly, Kelly's tweet and just look at it again and again to understand how easily they will throw somebody else on the bus because it makes fun for them to do so. Modern culture has a vested interest in pretending that only female and male exist because enemies of LGBT people recognise it's important to erase intersex people in order to uphold homophobia. Nancy, get in the bin. Resign, woman. Right, it's time. We're fed up with you now, you bloody waste of space. Just go and close Stonewall down while you're at it as well. Um, I'm sick of your homophobia. Absolutely sick of it. And I know many other people are too. Let alone the misogyny behind your movement. Then we have something lovely in the, in the Jester News Arts of Crazy today. It involves a woman of tremendous florality. I've ribbed her about this before, but Helen Joyce. This is a woman who knows how to wear flowers. She's done a piece in spite, right? It's a great piece. Popped it down there, yeah. And also you can listen to her. She's talking to Brendan over at, over at Spite, okay? So children were being sterilised, but no one could speak out. And they asked her what the experience was of living through what happened to Helen, and this has happened to so many other people. And her response is worth, worthy of praise. The experience of living through it myself has taught me that I didn't fully understand until now how important free speech was. I thought I cared about free speech before. And I think I always knew how, how unpleasant it would feel to be silenced. And I can tell you, it does feel very unpleasant. You feel like you're being throttled and choked. But that's not the bit that matters. What matters is that by talking that we make new knowledge and get to better understanding of what's happening. And what's happening is children are being sterilised because critics of gender ideology have not been allowed to speak. Thank you, Helen. I think in articulating that, you'll articulate a lot of people's feelings. So there you have it. On one side, we've got Nancy Kelly, uh, dribbling, unscientific, moronic nonsense from the queer theory and gender crowd, or the simplicity and truthful voice of Helen Joyce. I'm going to listen to Helen and continue to appreciate the florality of her marvellous outfits. Jester news us out. Keep jesterin', good folks. Keep jesterin'.